If you or someone you know is suffering from HIV and AIDS, we encourage you to live positively. What do we mean? Take your medication on time, all the time. Eat healthy, exercise, practice safe sex, and accept the support of family and friends. For more information, contact the Jamaica Aid Support for Life at 925-0021. Hello and welcome to this World AIDS Day edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. We have a lot in store for you, so stick and stay. The magazine unfolds right now. that no matter what you say, you follow all of the parenting rules and all of the parenting tips and your children will go out there and still do something stupid. The most that you can do is teach them responsibility. Responsibility to take a step, stop, think for a minute. Foresight to see what can happen in the future if they do something. Don't be afraid to be a parent. They're children and as parents we have to set up the necessary disciplinary structure so that they can grow and, and become positive citizens and good citizens of Jamaica. Because the bottom line is better parenting, better children, and ultimately what? A better nation. That's where we want to go. I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, December 1. The Education Ministry says it has finalized arrangements to pay all outstanding salary arrears to teachers in bursa paid schools. The Ministry says it provided $90.1 million to the 26 institutions last Friday. The payment is part of the last tranche of approximately $500 million in salary arrears from the 2007-2008 Heads of Agreement between Government and Teachers. The Education Ministry says this latest disbursement means all teachers in bursa paid schools have now been fully paid. In addition, the Ministry says it will complete payment this week for salary arrears due to a number of teachers currently attached to government paid institutions as well as those who have retired or resigned. Government's program to improve public health and safeguard the well-being of Jamaicans has been enhanced with the Health Ministry's introduction of new and improved meat inspection stamps. Manufactured at a cost of $3.5 million, 400 stamps were recently unveiled during a ceremony at the Juicy Patties headquarters in Clarendon. The stamps are uniquely designed to correspond with the registration numbers of each of the ministry's 400 public health inspectors. Those officers will use them in the inspection and stamping of meat products processed from legally slaughtered animals to verify their safety for public consumption. We have to ensure that meat and meat products prepared for human consumption are safe. This will most certainly improve accountability of the meat inspectors and traceability of meat and meat products. Production of the new stamps is in line with the country's national food safety policy, specifically the meat hygiene program. They will also assist in government's antiprodial larceny effort. All of the stamps currently in use will be recalled and destroyed by the Ministry of Health. Jamaicans are being encouraged to participate in an important survey that's currently being done to determine the prevalence of persons suffering from chronic respiratory problems. The Burden of Obstructive Lung Disease Bold Jamaica Project is being done as part of an international project. It involves a partnership by the University of the West Indies, the Statistical Institute of Jamaica and Imperial College Partners in the United Kingdom. Principal investigator for the local study, Dr. Althea Aquart stewart says there's nothing to fear from the simple test that is being administered during the study. It's a random survey. We want your household may be selected in the sample 
and I'm encouraging people who have been selected in the sample, please come out, participate, answer your questionnaires, all your information is confidential. The study targets persons aged 18 to 39 in 84 geographic areas across the country. Spirometry, a breathing test, is also being administered to persons over 40 years to see whether they have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. COPD is a preventable disease that involves the obstruction of airflow, usually caused by air pollutants and cigarette smoke. The Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining is kicking off its public sector energy champion competition this month. The competition is designed to promote a culture of energy conservation in the public sector. Participating entities will see the benefits both in reduced electric consumption and in terms of dollar savings. We expect that public sector enterprises will be able to save at a minimum 5% of the electricity consumption just by changing behavior. Over 70 ministries, agencies and departments, as well as individual public servants within these entities will be participating. Judging covers energy conservation interventions within organizations and energy efficiency awareness for individuals. The competition will wrap up in May 2015. And finally, one of the 164 petals which comprised the cauldron that was lit during the 2012 London Paralympic Games was unveiled during a ceremony at the Norman Manley International Airport on Friday. The petal was presented to Jamaica as a souvenir after the cauldron was dismantled following the Games. Each copper petal symbolized the 164 competing nations. Jamaica is the first of the participating countries to receive its gift and it will remain on display at the airport. The petal will stand from this day into the future as a symbol of the Paralympic glory. The grit, the determination, character, metal, and success of our athletes of whom we are so proud. The cauldron for the symbolic Olympic flame was used for both the Summer Olympics and Paralympics. For the Summer Games, 204 petals were lit. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamar McHale. Thank you for watching. The Ebola virus is transmitted through direct contact with an infected person's blood or other bodily fluids like saliva, urine, stool, and semen. Symptoms of Ebola include sudden fever, intense weakness, muscle pain, headache, and sore throat. This may be followed by vomiting, diarrhea, and rash, and in some cases, both internal and external bleeding, leading to death. Protect yourself. Avoid travel to Ebola-affected countries. Avoid contact with infected persons. Don't touch the body of someone who has died from Ebola. Wash hands frequently with soap and water and use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. To know more, call 1-888-663-5683. From an update on government's national Chigvi prevention campaign to opening the debate on the Caribbean Court of Justice bill in Parliament, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller and her team were kept busy this past week. Those and other stories come your way next. Prime Minister names new appointments to strengthen the NHD board. Putting an end to gender-based violence, the Prime Minister calls for a united effort. And a basic school in Whitfield Town benefits from $11 million expansion. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller opened the parliamentary debate on three bills, which, if passed, will see the Caribbean Court of Justice becoming Jamaica's final court of appeal. Speaking in the House on Tuesday, Mrs. Simpson Miller called for bipartisan consensus on the matter, arguing that the island's current final appellate court, the Privy Council, was inaccessible to most Jamaicans. The debate on these bills is also about Jamaica's identity, the exercise of its sovereignty, the protection of the legal rights of its citizens and the location of that sovereignty. And the Prime Minister used her office last week to push for greater awareness to the issue of gender-based violence. Ahead of Tuesday's International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, Mrs. Simpson-Miller dispatched Senator Sandra Faulkner to a church service on Sunday. 
In her message, Mrs. Simpson Miller pledged government's unwavering support for the elimination of violence against women and girls. In addition to work being done on sexual harassment legislation, the Prime Minister, through her information minister, gave an update on the work of a joint select committee of parliament. A joint select committee of our parliament is reviewing the Sexual Offences Act, the Offences Against the Persons Act, the Domestic Violence Act, and the Child Care and Protection Act. The committee will focus on offences as well as the punishment of crimes such as the murder of pregnant women, the assault of women, children, and the elderly, as well as sexual crimes. In the meantime, the administration is calling on the public to support the cause. It is the responsibility of all of us to do all that we can to give our women and girls a new reality and a different outlook by breaking the culture of violence and the culture of silence on this issue. And as part of its active support for the issue, the Office of the Prime Minister produced radio and television messages that are being carried during 16 days of activism from November 25 through to December 10. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller announced new appointments to strengthen the board of the National Housing Trust, the NHT, last week. The board was fortified with the appointment of four new members. Daisy Koch, who will serve as Deputy Chair, Jamaica Teachers Association Past President Clayton Hall, Chairman of the Police Federation Sergeant Raymond Wilson, and Pastor Michael Harvey of the Northern Caribbean University. The new appointees who assumed duties immediately are to serve alongside existing NHD directors until April 2, 2015. On Wednesday, Mrs. Simpson Miller witnessed the signing of a contract for $11 million to expand the Care Bear Basic School in Whitfield Town, St. Andrew. Let me encourage the administrators of this institution to make the best use of the assistance by the Japanese. I want to encourage the community members as well to continue to protect and take care of Care Bear Early Childhood Institution. It is for the benefit of the community and the children of the community. The funds were provided by the Japanese Embassy and will cover the cost to build three additional classrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen and an office. The Office of the Prime Minister gave an update on the national response to the chikungunya outbreak last week. Logistics Coordinator for the National Cleanup Campaign, Colonel Daniel Price, told the Jamaica House media briefing Wednesday that 50 projects had been approved since October. The projects paved the way for cleaning activities in the corporate area, Portmore and other areas of St. Catherine. Minister responsible for information, Senator Sandra Faulkner, said residents were also pitching in. Jamaicans are heeding the call to take personal responsibility for removing containers and clearing areas in which water settles and where mosquitoes can lay eggs and multiply. And a day after Wednesday's briefing, the OPM announced that it would be reviewing its policies to ensure the orderly flow of exchanges between the Office of the Prime Minister and the media at the weekly press briefings. The OPM's Communication and Public Affairs Director Huntley Medley issued a statement Thursday clarifying an incident involving two journalists. According to Mr. Medley, his efforts to retrieve a roving microphone from two reporters who were preventing other journalists from asking questions was met with resistance. On reflection, he said he was convinced that his actions were right but might not have been done right. Mr. Medley explained that he would never be party to any attempt to muzzle journalists in the performance of their duties. He, however, insisted that reporters also had a duty to act responsibly and respect the rights of others. Mr. Medley assured that his department would continue to facilitate the media's access to OPM information for public edification. Minister responsible for sport Natalie Nita Headley was on hand at the Norman Manley International Airport last week for the unveiling of the cauldron petal. The petal represents the island's superb performance in the 2012 Paralympic Games in London. We hope that this exhibit will inspire all who view it as their day traverse these all, as a symbol of peace, as a symbol of progress, and a symbol of partnership. And Prime Minister Simpson Miller received several guests at Jamaica House this past week. 
On Tuesday, Mrs. Simpson Miller received representatives of the Press Association of Jamaica and the Swedish ambassador to Jamaica. The Prime Minister also welcomed U.S. Congresswoman Barbara Lee and representatives of bauxite company UC Rasal. And that's how we close this week's edition of Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next time for the latest stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Welcome to the FSC Minute. I am Nadine Newsom. Today we continue to explore anti-money laundering and its implications for the FSC regulated sectors. Joining me is Larice Edwards Brown, Director of Investigations and Enforcement at the FSC. Welcome to the FSC Minute, Larice. Thank you for having me, Nadine. Larice, what does the FSC do to ensure that the insurance, securities, and pensions industries comply with anti-money laundering legislations? The Financial Services Commission issues guidelines to these sectors, the insurance sector, pension sector, and the securities sector. Now, we try to ensure that at a minimum, these entities have uh, controls in place that will prevent them from being used as conduits for money laundering or for terrorist financing. However, the licensees have a responsibility to ensure that they have prudent controls within their place of business to ensure that the guidelines and any government enac enacted laws are maintained within their organizations. Does the FSC approve forms, mm -hmm. requirements, or policies as it relates to compliance by regulated entities for anti-money laundering? The FSC does not approve forms or policies used or procedures used by any of our regulated entities in seeking to develop a robust anti-money laundering or countering or financing of terrorism framework. We seek to ensure that they have minimum standards and we also try to do an assessment of these entities to ensure that there are certain standards that are maintained within these institutions. But the whole process though goes beyond policies and procedures. We have to rely on our employees that are within these sectors to ensure that there is a presence of mind when you are dealing with customers who seek to do businesses with your entities. And how does the Know Your Customer procedure fit into all of this? The Know Your Customer procedure is very relevant. It helps the employee in the financial institution and also the compliance officer in the institution to understand the employee, know who is it that they're dealing with. So when a transaction seemingly is outside of the profile of that uh, customer, then they can make certain decisions. That includes making a report to the Financial Investigations Division. Thank you, Larice. My guest today was Larice Edwards Brown, Director of Investigations and Enforcement at the FSC. For the FSC Minute, I am Nadine Newsom. <laughs> What are you doing to help the fight against crime? Sitting on the corner, minding your own business, definitely not going to work. It is time for us to unite. Unite. Unite for change. Citizens coming together to make their respective communities safer. The police, schools, public health, business, churches, NGOs, parents and neighborhood watch volunteers. As we, the police, do our job. We, as citizens, need to do our part as well. Report crimes or even suspicious activities. Let's all work together. As one united front against crime. And make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Unite for Change, an initiative of the Ministry of National Security. As we begin our countdown to Christmas Day 2014, this next feature is sure to get you in a festive mood. Here's a hint, it's the drink of choice at this time of the year.
For many Christians around the world, Christmas is a time when they give thanks and celebrate the birth of Jesus. In Jamaica, Christmas is also a time to eat and be merry. It is usually at this time of the year that many persons prepare a feast fit for a king for their families, usually consisting of mouth-watering foods such as rice and gungu peas, roasted chicken, ham, Christmas cake, and best of all, sorrel. Sorrel has always been a popular Caribbean drink during the Christmas season. Its unique flavor and bright red color adds to the meal experience. The calyx-covered fruits are brewed in water to make a refreshing cranberry-colored tea. It's also used in salads, jams, puddings, and syrups. Sorrel contains a wide range of vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C, calcium, and riboflavin, and other nutrients. It is an antioxidant and fights anti-cancer cells and is highly known for its B1 compounds, which provides a calming effect after it is consumed. Sorrel has several other properties. It soothes dry skin, purges the bowel, reduces inflammation or swelling. Mixed with salt, pepper, and molasses, sorrel can cure biliousness. A lotion made from the leaves can also be used on sores and wounds. It also stimulates digestion and improves appetite. Sorrel was brought to Jamaica in 1707 through the African slave trade. It is a plant that is dated to as far back as the 16th century and was first grown in India, Malaysia, and in Niger, Africa. Today it is grown year-round in Africa and widely cultivated throughout tropical and subtropical regions around the globe. So this Christmas, while eating all the Christmas cake and ham, remember to have some sorrel. It is not only a refreshing part of Jamaica's Christmas culture, but it has a wide range of health benefits. Hi, this is Tessan, and I want all you young people to listen to me very carefully. Crime doesn't pay. You can do so much with your life. Don't throw it away in some gang. Stay in school and work hard for what it is you want. It's up to you. Your future will be determined by the decisions you make. Remember, a gang is a dead end. A message from the Ministry of National Security. For many, it's the most wonderful time of the year. But for others, it's a dreaded period as it brings forth a myriad of negative memories and feelings of inadequacy. But we don't want you to feel like the Grinch who stole Christmas. Check this next feature. Just want to remind persons that there are some very simple things that we can do just to survive the holidays. And it doesn't take a lot of money. Reach out. I think sometimes the reality in life is that in giving, we receive. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to travel from Kingston to Montego Bay to visit somebody. You can pick up the phone. A simple telephone call can make a difference in somebody's life. Sending a card, I mean, that's it, a traditional age-old I mean, practice and encourage us. Continue to do the things that we've always been taught to do. And I encourage persons for Christmas Day, don't remain in your house and wallow in self-pity. Um, do something, yes? I mean, we have to take control of our own lives and our own happiness. And don't expect other persons to do that for us. At this time of the year, there are lots of activities that are going on that don't necessarily demand money or call for excessive spending. I mean, there are lots of fears going on. There are, you know, um, fairs and all over the place, Devon House, craft fair, many churches have activities going on. I mean, get your newspaper, you know, follow the media and, you know, follow what's going on and just go out and t participate and, you know, sometimes just going out and going to a fair and just walking around. You don't necessarily have to spend. You're there walking around, you run into friends, you chat, you laugh, and that can be uplifting for the spirit. So go ahead and embrace the holiday spirit. And maybe, just maybe, it could be a Merry Christmas after all.
And that's our show. We value your feedback, so please continue to send your comments and queries to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. Want to be in the know on all the positive vibrations coming from Jamaica? Join us on Facebook, add us on Twitter, like our YouTube page, or visit our website, jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.